My next guest ought to have a view. He's Jeff Nichols, Managing Director, American Precious Metals Advisors. He's also the Senior Economic Advisor to Roslyn Capital, and he runs NicholsOnGold.com. Jeff, good to have you with us good on to Bloomberg. Be back. So I'm assuming because of your NicholsOnGold.com, you're still pretty bullish on what's going on with the precious metal gold. I, I am. I'm actually quite bullish. I have been for a long time, and I remain so. All the factors that we've spoken about, from uh, Fed policy to central bank policy overseas, the debt situation in this country and Europe, rising demand in India and China, central banks around the world now buying gold, all of these continue and they're likely to continue for the foreseeable future. But does a rising price of gold necessarily mean that we're going to have problems in the value of other asset classes? In other words, there's a limited, um, there's a finite amount of capital and it's got to go somewhere. And if it golds the gold, it leaves somewhere else. Well, you know, really the gold market is a very small market compared to capital markets. It's almost insignificant. It gets a lot of attention uh, because it, uh, uh, hits us emotionally in certain ways that other assets don't. Uh, but yeah, when you make a presentation, let's say, to an institutional client, I mean, do you bring a bar of gold or a gold <laughs> coin? Because, so you're, no, but you're right. When people actually touch and feel and lift a bar, you know, a kilo of gold or a gold coin, something happens. You see something in their personality. Yeah, there's an change. emotional connection yeah. to gold. And I can't explain why, but it's uh, been true over the millennia. And, and gold distinguishes itself over the millennia, really is the only asset that has maintained its value over hundreds and hundreds of years. And I think investors look to gold for that reason, uh, as a store of value, as a monetary asset, um, and as something that is a, a hedge and diversifier and insurance policy against all sorts of risks. But yet we've seen gold, as I said, run up to $1,577 an ounce. And you've even written that we've had a little bit of a correction. Is this something that is temporary? Does this last for two, three months? Or is this something more pronounced? Well, for better or worse, I think we're in a, still in a long-term bull market years ahead to run up uh, I think late this year we could easily see $1,700 an ounce. Next year, perhaps $2,000 an ounce. Beyond that, $3,000 and maybe even higher. But but what give, what gives you the the confidence that those are just more than just numbers? I mean, why let's say $2,000 an ounce? What is the the basis for that particular price point? It's it's simply that more and more people around the world are chasing a limited supply of gold, and uh, you know. In China, for example, uh, five or seven years ago, it was illegal to invest in a bar of gold or a gold coin. Now the government is promoting it as a legitimate form of savings, and China is underinvested. India is underinvested. We're talking about billions of people. As some of those people move into the middle class and uh, become uh, consumers, uh, some of that money is going to go into gold jewelry, some of it's going to go into gold investment, and, and, and those are permanent or at least very long-term purchases. These aren't people who are going to sell when it rallies a little bit. Jeff, what about the risks? Because we know that precious metal investing is different than investing in a stock, for example, where you can look at the quarterly returns. I mean, this is basically the supply and demand. And as you say, it is a very small part of the entire capital allocation of institutional investors, at least right now. And we witnessed, for example, with silver, a huge pullback from the price of silver. How do you manage the risk in these style of investments? I, I think you buy for the long term. You buy over time, uh, maybe in a sense dollar cost averaging, and expect that it's going to rise. Gold and silver particularly, even more so silver, uh, tend to be volatile assets in the short run. And they have over the past few decades. In the 1970s, which was a great bull market for gold, we saw silver uh, at various points in time pull back 40, 50, even 60% as it was continuing to rise along a upward trend. You must have had a stomach made of silver in order to withstand that kind of pullback. I mean, how do you maintain the discipline and the poise to stay in the investment, to be long? Well, you have to be educated and you have to understand why you're investing. You have to know what the fundamentals are for gold and silver and, and be aware that one day uh, things will change and it may be time to start shedding positions. Uh, but I think it's important 
uh, for many investors to retain uh, as an insurance policy some small core holding, maybe 5 or 10 percent of investable assets in physical metal as an insurance policy against risks that we can't even imagine. What about silver right now in terms of the price? Do you think that this is a good buying opportunity? I do. I think at near $50 it was expensive. Uh, at $35 or $37 where we are today, I think it's an opportunity to buy. And I think gold also is an opportunity to buy. When we look back a few years from now, these will seem like very reasonable and attractive price levels to have come into the market. Do you have a preference for the actual physical metal, whether it be gold coins or gold bullion or silver coins, or the shares in companies, and they're typically gold mining companies mm -hmm. because silver ends up coming along with the gold? Right. Uh, my preference is for gold because it is principally a monetary asset. Silver has an industrial side. It has additional risks. I think there's a place in a portfolio at times for the right mining shares, but mining shares are not physical metal, and they carry a whole host of additional risks. All right. I want to thank you very much, Jeff Nichols, Managing Director, American Precious Metal Advisors.